Hello and welcome to lecture 30 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at section 5.3 on diagonalization. So what we're going to do is, it's actually the first of two lectures on diagonalization. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to introduce similarity, and then we're going to talk about its connection to diagonalization. So let's make myself disappear here, and let's get on with today's lecture. So the first concept that we want today is the notion of two matrices being similar. So you have to imagine you have two square matrices, and we say that A is similar to the matrix B if there's an invertible matrix, if there exists an invertible matrix P, such that B is equal to P inverse A times P. Or another way of saying this, just by rearranging the, the matrices P, is saying that A can be written as P times the matrix B times P inverse. So the two matrices are being similar if up until a multiplication by an invertible matrix, you can make one matrix from the other. And this uh, notion is symmetric in the following sense, that if A is similar to B, then B is similar to A. And why is that? Well, let's, let's say that we're given that A is similar to B. So according to definition, that means I can write B as the inverse of a matrix times A times the matrix P, which is invertible. So what we want to be able to do is do something the same for A. We want to be able to write A here, we want B in the middle, and then we want some invertible matrices on the outside. And the way they do that is we let Q be the matrix P inverse. And then what we have is that Q inverse B times Q is the same thing as P inverse inverse times B times P inverse, which gives me P times B times P inverse. And according to the definition, definition of similarity, that this is the equal to the matrix A. So we have now shown that B is similar to A because we've been able to show that A can be written as the inverse of a matrix times B times Q. Okay, so you do, the way that I usually like to think about it is this particular statement right here. A is similar to B, just means that I can find some invertible matrix P such that A is equal to B times B times P inverse. Okay, and just because A is similar to B, you can just move matrices around and what you would have called P before just becomes P inverse. Okay, so this is the notion of a similar matrix. And one of the reasons that we like similar matrices is that they actually have the same characteristic polynomial. And because both of these matrices A and B are the same characteristic polynomial, what they have to have is the same eigenvalues because you're not changing the characteristic equation at all. And let me prove that right here. So let's say that A and B are similar. So that means that B can be written as P inverse times A times P with P invertible. Okay, that's just a definition of uh, being similar. So that means that B minus lambda I N is equal to P inverse A P minus lambda I N. And now we're going to do a little trick here is the identity matrix, we can express it in terms of P inverse and P, right? So this is equal to P inverse A, P minus lambda, P inverse P. And the reason we want to do this is because both of these matrices here, we have matrices on both sides, they both have a P inverse on the left-hand side, so I can factor out a P inverse on the left-hand side, and they both have a P on the right-hand side. So I can factor out a P on the, on the right-hand side. 
So there we go. I can write b minus lambda i n as p inverse a minus lambda i n times this p. Okay, so this matrix is the same as the product of these three matrices. And because that, because this matrix here is equal to this matrix, they have to have the same determinant. So we'll move that move over here. So what we have is that the determinant of b minus lambda i n is the same thing as the determinant of p inverse a minus lambda i n times p. And now this is a product of matrices right inside of here. And the way that the determinant works among product of matrices, it's just the product of determinants, right? So we have the determinant of p inverse, the determinant of a minus lambda i n, and the determinant of p. But one thing to remember is that the determinant of p inverse times the determinant of p, these are just numbers and they're actually inverses of each other and they actually cancel each other out. So what we end up with is that this is equal to the determinant of a minus I, uh, lambda i n. And remember, this is the characteristic equation, right? This expression here in terms of lambda are the characteristic equations. So this is actually what we needed to prove that both of these both of these matrices have the same determinant, right? So that means that A and B have the same characteristic equation. So one consequence of what we've done here is given A, we want a B which is similar, whose eigenvalues are easier to compute. So just to kind of maybe justify what I just said here, suppose that you're given a matrix A and so, and then what maybe you can find another matrix B that it's similar to where you can, it's a lot easier to see what the eigenvalue is. So maybe it's easier to find a matrix that it's similar to. And then from that matrix B, you can figure out the eigenvalues. And then from the previous theorem, you're getting the eigenvalues of A at the same time. So what we're gonna be doing in today's class is looking at a particular class, a way of finding similar matrices. So we wanna find A being similar to a matrix B, but we want this B to have a particularly nice form. So that's what the, we're gonna lead into into the next part of today's lecture. I will explain that part in a minute.